and seek not ye that ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek, check this out, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, Pat's two cents. If your life is filled with getting over, getting by, the hustle, making this deal, closing that deal, getting that account, getting the other account, keeping your savings up so high, buying this property, buying that property, buying this car, buying that car, buying these clothes, buying those clothes, making sure that you make a great impact and impression when people take one glance at you and they're like, whoa, I'm impressed. Well, that's not what God wants us to focus on. But if you look at how much time you invest in that compared to how much time you invest in your personal time and relationship with God, how do they compare? Moving right along. Now, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags with which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that fails not, which no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily, not busy, watching. All right. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known the hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Okay. What I want to say to you on that real quick is where is your focus? What is your life about right now? It's obvious to sinner and saint alike all over the world that we are in the last days. We are in the biblical prophetic times the end times. Time is winding up. What I got from the Lord while I was studying was saints, synchronize your watches. It's countdown time. When you synchronize your watch, you're preparing yourself for something that is a scheduled event. When thieves get together and they put their minds, help me Lord with this, when thieves get together, they put their minds on robbing a bank or robbing a, a uh, uh, the, the mint, the U.S. mint, whatever they're going to rob, what they do or some expensive museum with great artifacts, what they do is everything they planned and laid out, they synchronize their watches. They know that at nine seconds, this needs to be done. At 45 seconds, that needs to be done. In two minutes, we need to expect to bust a move over here. Five minutes, this is going to happen. We need to couch down and hide. The security guard's coming through. Synchronize your watches. So what I say to you is synchronize your watches because the enemy, I'm saying this to all of you, all of you who are 
who know God and those of you who don't. Time is winding up for a lot of you who don't know God. And it's time to seek the Lord. Synchronize your watches because time is winding up. When you look at the signs of the times, you can you can judge what the weather is going to be. You can tell if it's going to rain, if it's going to snow, if we're going to have a tornado watch, if we're going to have an earthquake. A whole lot of signs happen that let you know something's getting ready to bust a move in nature. Well, Jesus is trying to tell you he's about to bust a move. And many of us won't be ready because we're not watching. Our concentration is on me, myself, and I. Our concentration is on getting over. Our concentration is on what they did to me, what they said to me, how they mistreated me, how they used me, how they uh, uh, faltered on their promise, how they didn't come through, how this fell through, how that failed. If I'm going to be able to keep this up, if I'm going to be able to keep that up, but my question to you is, is your main focus on the things of God and what you could be doing for him in these last days by being a blessing to his people and to those that are about to be his people? Or are you too busy worrying about the what ifs of life, the how much of life, huh? Your future. Your future, not God's future, your future. Are you too busy laying up store for what might never happen? Because when Jesus comes, no matter what is going on in your life, taint going to matter unless it has to do with the kingdom of God. As they say, when you die and they get ready to bury you behind, they can't bring your house with you. They can't bring your boat with you. They can't bring your, your corporation with you. You can't bring your savings account with you, your checking account, your gold bullion, your savings bonds, your this, that, or the other. But all that stuff that you had laid around, you could have used to be a blessing to those around you that you know have need. And God says, how can you shut up your bowels of compassion? Go in peace. I'll pray for you. You have the means to meet what you decide to keep. <laughs> so you have to look at all of those areas of your life. Some of you have so many problems with your family members. Mm. You forgive. You try. Some of you need to leave some of those family members alone. It doesn't mean you don't forgive them. You pray for them, though. Are you praying for them? Or are you on the phone, yakety-yak, yakety-yak, and you're talking about everything that's rotten about this one, that one, or the other one? Or are you pouring your heart out before God, getting your hurt out, getting yourself healed, and asking God to do something for them? Are you asking God to show you what you can do for them? so they can see the hand of God moving in their lives. See, everything you do, whether it be business, whether it be ministry, whether it be social, no matter what it is, it should be centrally focused around God, his ways, his kingdom, evangelizing the lost, reaching out to people that need. That's what your focus, when Peter sang that song about loving, it reminded me of the song that says, and this is what we should focus on in these last days. Show me how to love in the true meaning of the word. Teach me to sacrifice, expecting nothing in return. Now, expecting nothing in return also means expecting no credit. Oh, I did all that and I did all that and they never did recognize me. Hmm, what's your motive? Expecting nothing in return. I've got to live my life each day, becoming more like you each and every way. My 
Word is not enough. Lord, teach me how to love. Listen. Oh, God, help me. Um, the song describes a woman standing on the corner with her children on the street. They don't have any place to live. And I heard him say in that still small voice, what have you done for the least of these? Lord, fill my heart with compassion. I mean, I'm going to stop there. But the point is, we're so blinded by our own goals and our own desires and our own acclimat. Uh, you know, we want to make an impression. We want to. We want people to see us as 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 making great exploits and doing all kind, accomplishing all kind of grandiose feats. But sometimes it's the little things. Here's a little thing. <laughs> this this make you laugh. You can laugh at me on this one. A friend of mine, this is before I had my car, before I got blessed with my car. A friend of mine wanted to go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. As we went, I had a limited amount of change in my pocket. And I had to leave the money in my bank account because my budget was right up to the edge of that penny to pay all my bills off. So I knew I couldn't use that card. So we go into Kentucky. And I said, okay, I can afford two things of macaroni and cheese. Now, I'm all excited. I'm just giving you an example. I'm all excited because I haven't had mac and cheese in a year, y'all. I love mac and cheese. Y'all don't know. Yeah. So anyway, I'm getting ready to get some mac and cheese. I'm just showing you the little basic things that we overlook in our lives. <laughs> and I'm all excited because I got the two big bowls and they're going to be in my house and I'm going to eat half a bowl and then try to stretch the other two bowls over four days. It, you know, it, 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 oh, I was just going to, I was looking forward to it, right? I get out to the car and here comes a couple walking their dog, talking about, is there some way you can get us something to eat? I'm hungry. I'm looking at my mac and cheese and I was like no I don't want to let go of my mac and cheese no I waited a year so I had to give up a bowl I couldn't say no it was right there in my hand did I need two bowls no I wanted two bowls did I have any more money to buy another feast no did the lady waiting on me have the time for me to go in and get anything else no so I gave them my bowl of mac and cheese. You know that hurt me? That hurt my feelings, y'all. Now I may be saved, I may be filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire, but Mama Sita did not want to cut loose on that mac and cheese, knowing I wasn't going to get none for another six or eight months. <laughs> I had to pray and ask God to forgive me for my attitude. <laughs> but it was within my power. Now, I didn't have riches, but I did have food. What did they want? Something to eat. How could I say no? When the Bible says, how can you see your brother or sister in need and shut up your bowels of compassion? How dwelleth the love of God in you? I don't ever want God to say, no, 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 baby, you ain't loving. You ain't loving. No, 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 no. You fall so far from that. You turn my stomach. I don't want God to say that to me. Depart from me. I never knew you. So even though I wanted my mac and cheese, I wanted God's favor more. You hear me? All right. So my point to you is you watch how many rich folks out there with billions of dollars, billions, that it's in their power to hire a big rig. It's in their power, their financial power, to hire a crew that could go to these farmers Lynn told me about that can't get rid of their food. They have to burn. They have to throw away food while in other parts of the country 
There are people in food lines waiting. Waiting for some donations of food because they don't have the wherewithal or the stores are, are, are depleted of food. There's a famine in the land, y'all, but there's food being burned and wasted because the farmers can't get the food to the people. They can't do anything with the food because the restaurants are closed, so the demand is low or, or non-existent, and all that food goes to waste. Where are the rich people in this country? Those of you who have the billions and the quadrillions and whatever else you got laid around. What happened to all that bouillon you could pull out and hire some trucks, some big rigs that need work too, and send them to go pick up and pay the farmers for the food and distribute the food to these centers that are passing them out to people? What happened to that? See, we don't realize in this country there's going to be a lot of judgment to those that have the most because those that have the most are not even given those that have the least any thought, any consideration. Because those that have the most want more, more, more. They're not thinking about those that are in need. Basic need. They're not thinking about that. It's within many of you on YouTube, many of you in this country and in other countries, some in the Middle East that got oil up the yin yang. You got all the bucks that you could ever, you could never spend through what you have. But you want to keep it. Jesus could part the sky in two weeks for all you know. What you going to do with all that? So many people could get help. See, that's why God wants us to be kingdom minded. When you're kingdom minded, it ain't all about me, myself, and I. Me, my four, and no more. It ain't about that. It's about being your brother's keeper. It's about meeting the needs of those that are homeless. Some of you could pull out your chump change and buy a hospital building and house thousands of homeless people so they can come in out of the cold. But you won't do it because it doesn't bring any returns to you. What about me? What about me? Well, what about me? Well, what about me? What about me? Well, hey, what, no, no, no. What about me? What's it going to do for me? Huh? What am I getting out of it? Got something for me? If I'm bringing something, I better get something. Huh? What about me? Wow. Show me how to love in the true meaning of the word. Teach me to sacrifice, expecting nothing, nothing, nothing in return. I want to give my life away, not sell it. Becoming more like you each and every day. My words, I love you. I love you. I love God. Hallelujah. My words are not enough. Show me how to love. Oh. In these last days, many of you are going to be tested. Here's the sad part. Those of you that have the most aren't even going to recognize God's given you an opportunity to truly be a blessing in the kingdom, in the kingdom matter of the word. The kingdom is about being a blessing. The kingdom is about distribution, about sharing, about helping, about lifting the loads, putting somebody in a hotel room instead of watching them and their kids sleep in the, in the, in the, in the, I mean, you don't have to bring them to your house. Buying some coats and blankets and going downtown and passing them out. Get a team with you so you're protected. Many of you are so busy thinking about what else you're going to do to make you happy. This is the time to get into the kingdom. The kingdom is them oriented, not me oriented. It's them. I saw a movie where the guy was trying to collect shoes. A little retarded guy. 
It was so cute. He was trying to collect shoes so that he could send them to Afghan. I forget, I forget what country. I don't want to get the country wrong. But it was an African country. And he wanted to send shoes to these people. So he's all over the place trying to get shoes. He sits down all day long and got one pair of shoes. So he decides to take his shoes off to prime the pump. And he's sitting there barefooted. Many of you that have thousands of stuff wouldn't even think to take something off your body and give it to someone else and not look back. We live in a very selfish, self-centered time. The Bible says, because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. And many of you will be warm and filled and you'll be happy, go lucky, while there are people out there that are hurting. You ain't got to save the world. God didn't ask you to do that. Just one person at a time. One person at a time. That's all it takes. You don't have to get out there and do great exploits, have your name up on the billboard for giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to this charity and that charity. Have your picture taken and your name and all, all the accolades of people. No. But some of you have the ability to help a family that's losing their home. And they may only need $10,000 and $10,000 to you is sitting up in some CD or some, some, some account that you ain't never going to touch because you don't need it. Never will. And you can empty that account and bless those people and save them from being out on the street. But no, it won't occur to you because you're not kingdom minded. These days are going to show the difference between the wheat and the tares. It's not just about who's living a holy life, who doesn't cuss, fuss, drink, smoke, get high, screw. It ain't about that. The Bible says, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And many of you don't realize how much, how far away you are from God's heart because you're not seeking the kingdom. You're not seeking those things that are above. You're seeking those things of the world. That's what's really important to you. Sit down and, and do the math. What really counts to you? What really sends you flying? What sends you soaring? Your accomplishments, huh? Your credentials, all the degrees. All the titles, the D's and the LD's and the blah, blah, blahs behind your name. People recognize, I've heard people in church call me elder, call me deacon, call me pastor. Don't call me by my name. Why not? It's your name. Constantly need ego stroked. Constantly. Pride cometh before a fall, and a haughty heart comes before destruction. It's going to be real shocking when God parts those clouds, and we see how many people, how many. This one woman at, at a particular church was telling me when she retires, she's going to be living off $7,000 a month at least because she set herself up. She got it made. That's a blessing. But there were poor people in that woman's church. Poor people standing up praying, asking for folks to pray that God won't let them be evicted. They got five or six kids. Husband left or whatever the case may be. And they're, they're, they're having a hard time. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, they're in a hotel with all them kids packed up in like sardines. All them people with all the big bucks ain't thought to do a thing for them. I pray for you. Oh, yes, they say nice little pretty prayers. And then they go on to their little happy lives and never look back. How dwelleth the love of God in you? 
When your life is all about you, when you're self-centered, when you don't have time for other people and their problems. See, this this is what you don't realize. That's what Jesus was about. He was about the beggar. He was about the blind. He was about the lepers. He was about those, the prostitutes. He was about people who were at the low ebb of their emotional levels. He was about people who were out of their minds with insanity and loaded with demons. He was about the people with the real needs. Here's the sad part. The rich folks have real needs too, but they're shrouded and covered with all the sparkle of their lifestyle. So they don't even have to deal with their needs. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, while God could be helping them, a lot of times God removes his hand and just say, go on, get all the blessing you got. Get all you can, baby, because this is where it ends right here. My question to you is when he parts those clouds, are you going to be found watching, watching and listening for his direction, watching and listening for what he's going to do? Huh? Are you going to be found doing that? Think about it. Think about it. What are you going to be found doing? Planning your next move? Planning your next Hey, I got something planned, baby. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do the other. Oh, yeah. This is going to be really neat. And it's going to be beautiful. What have you asked God lately? Have you asked him, Lord, I have that account I almost forgot about. What do you want me to do with it? Lord, do you want me to buy that property that keeps getting my attention so that I can house some women who are coming in off out of prison or some women who are dying from AIDS? Have you thought kingdom thoughts? This is the time. This is the time to ask God to show you what to do with all he's blessed you with. This is the time to ask God. I, I, I watched Oprah open up schools in Africa. I watched Oprah do a lot of things for people. So many people out there with that kind of, that kind of a, Fortune, right there at their fingertips. Right at their fingertips. There are people right here in this group who have made things possible for folks that they didn't have to make things possible for. I'm one of the recipients. You hear me? My own family members don't even think to do anything. But the people right here in this group, and they're not rich. No, but what they have, they do. One guy in our group has been helping a couple with mind issues. The Lord finally let them know when to stop the flow. But the bottom line is, it's better to give to a fault than not give it all. It's better to love to a fault than not love at all. You will, your well will never run dry when you're steadily distributing the water. You steadily distribute the water is just like the woman with the cruises of oil. As long as she had a thing to fill up, that oil kept coming. She kept turning that thing up into a vessel. And see, that's what we don't do. We don't pour our oil, our love, our caring, our compassion into other vessels. We keep them to ourselves. As long as she kept pouring that oil, the oil kept running. Never ran dry until she stopped pouring. Are you pouring? Or have you totally forgotten about God's kingdom? About the work of the kingdom, the service of the kingdom, the ministry of the kingdom? There will be people out there that will always be able to feed people. Their food will never run dry. Why? Not because they're rich, but because they're steadily giving it. The two people that, that are the biggest blessings 
and, and material are in the best position materially as well in our group. I had a dream about one of the guys in our group. And I could see that God was going to bless. I'll call the name because he already knows it. I saw Rashad with a handful of money. And he was ministering to young boys. And he was laughing. He was happy. And he was just divvying out the bucks, just helping them out for them to take it to their families. But he had it to give, and as it came, he gave. He gave, and he gave. And it was as if God was showing me in this time, those that are giving the most, even if it's a little bit, if they're willing to give, they will never run dry. Now, they may not have what Oprah has. They may never, never live in a two-story, three-story mansion. They may never have a swimming pool. They may never have a boat. They may never have a, a big anything, just have a basic house. But they're storing up treasures in heaven, y'all. And you guys are going to see when we get to heaven, when God parts those clouds and he calls us up, you're going to be shocked at the ones that get the highest seats. Mm-hmm. You find that a lot of times it's the leastest that do the mostest. I know, bad grammar, but you got me. Yeah, it's the leastest that do the mostest for the leastest. And the mostest do the leastest for the leastest. But they got theirs here. But who knows what little they'll have when they get to heaven. Hmm. I remember my sister told me, she said, you can write a check and pat yourself on the back, or you can get your hands dirty and get involved from your heart. See, with a check, you don't have to get involved. You don't have to get your hands dirty. Here, here's to your charity. Mm -hmm, God bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep on trucking. But there are those that don't have much. And listen, this woman on Mountain View, I'll never forget this. I know this woman's going to have crowns galore with all kind of jewels galore. This woman had a husband that worked construction work. I'm just giving you a quick example. I'm going to stop because I'm talking too long. But this woman did construction work. I'm going to share with you what Marlene told me to remind me if I forget. But <laughs> this woman's husband, was oftentimes without work and they were just struggling and pinching pennies. That woman would go down the street. She didn't have nothing to give, but she would spend half the day in this other family's house, a family with two alcoholic parents and three neglected children. And she'd go in there and clean their homes and cook a meal for them. I'm telling you, that's getting involved. That's what God's looking at. Not writing a check to charity. And if they didn't have anything to eat, they could eat at her house. And she just put out smaller portions for everybody, but everybody got to eat. She shared what she had. And God's taking care of her now. My point to you is you can live a life that when you get old, you'll be all alone. Nobody wants to be around you. Nobody cares. And you'll wonder, well, what about the nice things I did in my life? Well, yeah, that was nice. But what about all the nice things you didn't do that you could have? That may weigh so far above what you did. Listen, Marlene shared this with me. For those of you who run churches, those of you who pastor big churches, mega churches, all of this going on. These members of your churches, 
You have preached to them to be ready. And I ask you, are you ready, pastors mm -hmm, of these mega churches? Are you ready? Some of you have had building funds for 10 friggin' years. And you got the money sitting up in an account. And your members are hurting now. Did it ever dawn on you to call each one and find out how much you could give them to help them out of their trick bag, help them out of a hole they're in right now? Did it ever occur to you to take one of your 10 cars and just give them to one of your members that needs it the most because they can't afford to get their car fixed? But you got a car, you got four or five cars. You can only drive one at a time. Did it ever occur to you to do that? Did it ever occur to you to go in your closet and dig through your hundred pairs of shoes and take 60 of them and lay them out at the church? Take your wardrobe, your kid's wardrobe, your, your wife's wardrobe, your husband's wardrobe and lay it out on the, on the, on the pew and say, everybody who needs clothes, come get it. Anybody who needs coats, come get it. You could walk around with the money basket and say anybody who needs to pay your bills, come forward and get the money to pay your bills. Did it ever dawn on you to do that? Or are you still telling the folks to tithe and give? When you got enough money to give to them now. Okay. I'm getting a little beside myself. Let me calm my little happy hips down here. I don't want to get into Pat right now. Not trying to browbeat the church, but we as the body of Christ need to learn what God really means when he says, seek those things that are above. Be others minded rather than me minded. Because when he parts those clouds, baby, there are going to be a whole lot of surprise faces with jaws dropping onto the ground when they've got their little miniature list of all the nice things they did and God's got a mile long list of all the nice things they didn't do that he told them to do and they ignored the thought because they didn't want to disturb their stuff. And when he goes and they're still down there on the ground talking about, wait, what about me? I never knew you. You don't want to hear God say, I never knew you when he comes. Think about it. Okay, I'm going to stop because I'm talking too long and I'm not trying to beat you guys up. It's all about love. It's all about uh, compassion, about thinking of others more than just me, 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 Please ask God to take your mind from me to them in these last days. God bless you.